The Body Shop connects you with the hottest fitness models in the world. Learn the backstage secrets that most successful bikini divas, fitness models, and bodybuilders use to dominate their competition and land on the covers of magazines. Only here at The Body Shop will we allow you to listen and talk to the best of the best in fitness competition. If you're passionate about bodybuilding and fitness, you have found your new home. All of us here at FTNS Radio would like to welcome you to The Body Shop. Body Shop. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome your host, Andre Brick St. Clair. Ah, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of The Body Shop. Thank you for allowing The Body Shop and FTNS into your homes and into your airwaves. Only here at The Body Shop will you learn the backstage secrets that the most successful bikini divas, models, bodybuilders, and all fitness enthusiasts use to dominate their competition and land on the covers of magazines. In the studio with me today, I have Mr. Dan Lorenzo and... Kate Michella. So how are we doing today, people? What's going on? Yeah, how are I'm you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. So Dan has uh, graciously brought me in one of my favorite products, Sailor Core C4. I see. I, you've been tweeting about it. I've been, yeah, you been know. Been tweeting about it. I've seen the videos. <laughs> I got to let some of the people know who has actually never seen one of my workouts on um, YouTube. I am not one uh, to... You know, brag about supplements. I really, I'm actually, I actually shun supplements to be honest with you. But um, the first time you was in here, and you know, you was talking about cellular core and, and um, what it is, and, and it's uh, you know, the fact that when you're reading the labels, you see each and every single thing that's that's in the labels. No um, secrets. No secrets at all. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to try it. Um, and uh, I firstly used other products in the past. I've used Jack 3D, which to me was probably one of the best things out. There's another one called 1MR, which yep. was, you know, good, just too much stimulants for my personal taste. And then when you gave me the C4, I said, all right, I'll, you know, I'll try it. I see what it would do. Goldilocks found their fit. <laughs> there we go. I told you we get you straightened out. I do like the way you put that. Um, I did a C4, uh, 25 minutes before going to the gym. Um, walked in there and uh, put 455 on the bench after a warm up of 315 for 35 reps. I put 455, banged it out for three, and it was actually talking throughout the entire workout. I dream, I of, dream of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I put that many plates on there, just not the big ones. <laughs> you know what? Everybody can do that, too. You just got to go to the buffet. That's all you got to yeah, do. Yeah, there you go. And uh, now I see that we have a new product out here. It's called NO3 NO3 Chrome, Chrome man. Yeah, exactly. No, uh, no stems in right. that one, no creatine in that, so it stacks with absolutely anything. Okay. It'll make your C4 actually hit harder. Which oh, really? is good, helps the absorption of it. Uh, it take that 60 to 90 minutes before pre-workout. Um, and, uh, you know, vasodilators in there is just going to help your pump, help everything else you're taking work even better. Uh, nutrient absorption, like I said, muscle pumps, vascularity, you know, and help you recover quicker as well. So I think you'll like it. All right, well, you know, I give it a try, but I want to know, is this primarily for men or can women use this as well? Both. Both? Both. Kate likes it. I do like Kate, it. Kate, you like this? Yeah, I take it on leg days. You I take really it on like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so let me make sure. She gets nervous on arm days where, where her arms are feeling tight. Like, <laughs> <laughs> babe, babe, that's, that's the pump. That's the pump, babe. That's the pump, huh? You're supposed to let people, people search for that. <laughs> <laughs> she gets nervous on leg days. She loves it. So, <laughs> so we have Kate. You're taking the NO3 Chrome, a nitrous oxide pump amplifier, <laughs> as a female, yeah. and you and you vouch for this product. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Set straight something for me. Because a lot of females believe that if they start taking supplements, which are traditionally made for guys, um, that they're going to turn around, they're going to look like men and, and walk around with big bulging muscles like men. And obviously, that's not the case with you. Can you set that straight for some of our female that's listeners? That's definitely not true. It's the biggest myth ever because they just, <laughs> they help get you leaner and they help pump you up. Exactly. The pump again. Uh -huh, right. Um, but I, I've started taking them and I absolutely love them. Uh, and. I recommend them. How do you take it? Are you just taking it straight, like 30 minutes prior to your At workout? No three. Yeah. The 60 to 90 minutes. 60 to 90 minutes. Yeah. Um, 
because there's no stems, uh, like, is this keeping you up at night? Like, are you mm -mm. able to sleep? Yeah, absolutely. That has nothing to do with it. It doesn't bother me at all. Okay. Now, I'm asking you all these questions because the last time you was on the show, mm -hmm. which is roughly about five months ago, um, I asked you, would you consider competing? And you stated, nah, that's not for me. You'd rather <laughs> just support Dan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now that, you know, Dan decided to pass on the Europa, which I'm very proud of him for, um, I know his trainer, Gina, is probably not too thrilled about that initial <laughs> de decision. Hey, Gina. Um... She was competing at the Europa, so she had her. She oh, she her. was? Yeah, she was. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Do you want to compete or not? Come on, talk to me. I am planning on it. Oh, really? 2012. Okay, yeah. okay. And what show I do am. we have our eyes set on? Fitness Atlantic. Ah, <laughs> with Brian Canone, huh? <laughs> I can't wait to see that. That's the one. That's the one? Yeah. Okay, so which, uh, which, um, category? Either bikini or fitness model. Um, that whole thing. I'm not gonna do figure. Okay. But yeah. But you just want to come in. Yeah. Try to get I'm that pro card, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw we went to the show in April, and that kind of solidified it for me because I was a little interested, and uh -huh. it was really fun watching him do everything. Um, and then I saw it, and I was like, hmm. Oh, yeah. I want to do it. You know, it's funny. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't a test. <laughs> but I feel like it, when you bring a civilian to a show, yes. to an expo, right. it can go it can go one of two ways. Either they love it. Right. Either they love it or it freaks them out. <laughs> you know? And so in this case, what the product was, um, I mean, I didn't compete yet. Right. Okay. And the reason wasn't because I was slacking, but just because Kay started getting interested in it. And now it's something that we're going to do together. Nice. So Fitness Atlantic 2012. Right. Pro Carter bust. There it is. <laughs> so the couple that trains together stays together, huh? There we go. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. You see what we do here at the Body Show? Shop. Not only do we bring couples together, but we get them to compete. Oh man, I feel like Don King out here, man. You know, <laughs> Don King of radio. All right, so Kate, what was it about seeing the Fitness Atlantic show um, in April that sparked your interest and made you say, you know what, I want to do it? It made everything real because I had been watching him do it, but I had never seen girls like on stage and actually doing what they're doing. And right. we had we had a friend Nicole competing in figure, mm -hmm. and so I had seen her get ready for it and excited. And then meeting Lorianne and Allison here, and okay. then seeing the show a week later. Right. I don't know. It just kind of it clicked, I like and it that. just it, it seemed really like a good idea, I like challenge. That. So I it like was that. a yeah. setup. It was a setup. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it up there because I like the way we're doing the things right here. <laughs> All right. So now, Dan, what are you gonna be doing? Um, I think I think fit, I think fitness model. Fitness um, model. I think that's that's the plan. Although I know they have the new category, muscle model. I'm not really sure how how or where I fit into that. Right. Um, so I need, need some more info on that one. But, uh, I mean, the plan is just going to be getting the best shape possible. Right. Okay. And then, um, you know, basically just make a decision which, which category or crossover or just, you know, kind of kind of cross that bridge when we get there. You know what? Um, I'm not sure if you're able to cross over from fitness model to... To muscle model. To muscle model. I mean, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Brian's actually on his way into the studio. We, will, we know to ask him now. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm let Brian break down all the categories and, and the criteria, what it is that um, he's looking for, so on and so forth. But let's talk about the Europa show. Yep. And the fact that Gina was in it. Yep. How did Gina do? Fifth thing. Nice. Nice. Now, were, were you like at the vendor's booth or? Yeah, we, uh, Cellucor, we had a booth there. We, we were selling um, Cellucor products and also six-pack bags. A lot of people don't know that that's part of Cellucor. Right. Um, but they're meal management systems, you know, so uh, for anyone in the fitness lifestyle or just someone trying to manage, you know, multiple meals throughout the day. Right. Uh, perfect bag for you. You know, the small one holds three meals and then, I mean, it'll even hold up to four shakers, you know, wow. if you want for, or even more people have been putting, I, I just found this out, they take a bag and put food in the side pockets too. Nice. Um, so people are bringing their meals with them all day, which Nice. Good, so he brought um, me home a pink one. But oh, <laughs> working on getting her a customer, hot, hot pink one, though. You know what I mean? Um, what are you gonna put on the future pro? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> but uh, but no, we, we had a great success, um, you know, s selling those, and they're a huge hit at the show. We're also we're giving out these little funnels, which everybody loved. They look, we know, they look at us like we're geniuses now. At Silly Core, we've always been the innovation guys, yes. But I mean, I guess we're the first people, you know, who just got sick of folding up the paper. 
Oh, the yeah. paper cone in the gym, right? To get Wrapping the, it up, yep. Get the yep. powder in the Poland Springs bottle. Well, yeah. this is a funnel. The bottom of it's pretty wide, so it'll fit right in your Poland Springs bottle, and just okay. so you can put your scoop right in there. And actually, for you, this actually will fit in the C4 with your powder, so you can just take it with you, and you're all good to go. See, that's what I'm talking about. So, that's what I'm talking about. Creative, so we're just innovative. Giving those out. It was a great success, you know, and, and for me, uh, it was good just to go out and, and meet everyone, you know, mm -hmm. see, see the competition, cheer on Gene a little bit, too, so it was, it was fun. Okay, okay. Um... What's actually next for Cellacor? Because it seems like every time you come here, you have a new product. And, yep. and, and, and you know, so we got the NO3 Chrome. I we think got the my most personal favorite C4. But we, I want to ask you something. Just, just, I don't mean to cut you off, but when is a protein line coming out? That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, you know, talk to me. The, the, big, the thing that people have been waiting for has been the relaunch of our protein series. Okay. Um, and we, we've got a couple coming out. Uh, and I want to watch what I say about it so far. I don't want to give it all away. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what you can look for first from us uh, is in a, probably about four to six weeks, we'll be hitting shelves on um, okay. GNC. Uh, something called Super Sport. Okay, so of course, Super Sport protein. Now, uh, it's going to be an ultra clean protein. And what that means is no gluten, no yeast, no cholesterol, no mm. added sugar, no added right. salt, no fillers, none of that stuff. Just pure protein. We add extra um, micronized BCAs to it and also glutamine. Okay. So it's just perfect, you know, for, I mean, again, for men or women, there's no, there's little to no carbs in it as well. Nice. Um, so it's just going to, it's a perfect base. So like if you want the carbs, put them in. If you don't want them, you know, leave them out, whatever, you know, whatever you're doing. Um, tastes great too. That's going to be the first one that we're coming out with. And then shortly after that, kind of the every man's just like good tasting snack protein. Yeah. You know, that's coming out as well. That'll, that'll be called instant gourmet. That's what I'm talking about. So that's, that's happening soon. Um, like I said, four or six weeks. Also in the same time frame, my man, two new flavors of C4. Woo! So oh. one of them is my baby, pink lemonade. Pink lemonade. <laughs> I've, I've been talking about that forever. Let's come out with a Kool-Aid red. Uh, and then, well, we the fruit punch is kind of close to Kool-Aid. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's more of the Hawaiian, the Hawaiian punch. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Hawaiian punch, guys. Yeah. Um, but we have a uh, blue raz coming out, too. Blue raspberry. Yep. Oh, man. So. All right. Have you tried the C4 yet, Kate? I have. I was one of the guinea pigs my first time. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little baggy straight from the factory. Babe. <laughs> is that, is babe, that what that is? Babe, try this. <laughs> <laughs> and no questions asked. So you wasn't like, what is this? Uh, you might feel a tingle, but it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Adventures in the supplement industry. All right. Now, Kate, did you go to the Europa show? I didn't. I was in Italy. Italy. So I missed it. So what'd you bring me back? Um... Um, come on. Come on, think quicker. <laughs> think quicker. Biscotti, but he ate it all. Oh, I'm not dieting yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, I like not, that. I like and that. And there were two big bags of it, too. You totally could have some. Season yet. See how I get treated right here in the body shop? Uh, you know, Dan brings me gifts. You give away my food. I'm loving all of this right now. <laughs> all right, so I want to talk about Kate's dieting right now. From initially mm -hmm. having a bit of a reserve when, you know, thinking about competing, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So he was probably eating somewhat decent. I mean, you know, clean because of Dan. But how has your diet changed now that you actually have to get ready to step on stage? I eat a lot. I don't eat wheat really ever. Neither of us do. Um, we're big fans of like brown rice pasta and flour and stuff. But I've always been very into the healthy eating thing mm -hmm. that hasn't been new um but definitely less less wheat less that's wheat? the biggest thing yeah any other things that that you've had to like start to cut back on or, or cut out um not really cutting out but just more protein because like he just instills like protein at every meal mm -hmm. so that's a big thing and right. um i'm protein shakes all the time so that's okay. that's the biggest difference right. i never really drank a lot of protein shakes before so what is it like when you wake up in the morning and you're noticing, you know, different striations coming out on your body or <laughs> waistline getting thinner and thinner, you know, and what is that like psychologically? It's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's cool that you can, cause fr from Dan, I've learned a lot about manipulating your body okay. and it's interesting how you can truly build your body. Right. Like it's, a, it's, it's cool. And to see it happen is really neat like even when he was carb depleting like just the difference in there like just what water does mm -hmm. and it's cool it makes you want to do it more but yeah okay. dan how how difficult was it initially to explain the 
the, di the scientific aspects of dieting to someone that's really not into it without trying to make it boring? I mean, yeah, not making it boring is a challenge, right. you know, but like, you know, the, the interesting part is Kate and I have a good base to start from. Okay. Most people don't eat just grilled chicken and brown rice pasta and veggies, and that's a higher carb. Or, or you know, that's, 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 that's like a, a that's like a pushing a meal. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, for most people, that that sounds crazy already. So it's not it's not insanely difficult for us to kind of make the extra the extra mm -hmm. transition. But you know, explaining just like carb timing, for example, right? Um, and and how to cycle them and why, and, and especially the water and the salt thing. I think the easiest way to explain it was you know at the time she was just kind of watching me do it. Right. So you know, just watching the effects and the results that I had. That kind of is self-explanatory at that point, so it made it pretty easy. But you know what? There's no yeah. way. There's no way when it when it comes to asparagus. And tilapia <laughs> time, no, I'm not touching there's that. There's no way. There's no way to. There's the no way worst to was that. when it was when for breakfast it was tilapia and asparagus. That was kind <laughs> for of breakfast. Yeah, well, for breakfast. Me. I don't really? think she'll. Well, she'll never. I'm not gonna she'll do never that. have to go there. <laughs> <laughs> but that that was a little pushing it. I don't never know. Go, she'll never have to go there. But yeah. Well, thankfully I'll never have to go there either. I can't stand asparagus. Never mind tilapia. Brian gets yeah. mad at me because I'm like, I'm eating salmon and that's it. And, you know, Brian screams at me all the time, but it is what it is, you know? Yeah, you I know? know. All right. Unfortunately, I do got to cut to commercial. So what I'm going to do is I believe Brian's pulled into the parking lot. I'm going to let Brian break down the, the categories for you both. You know, it was very nice seeing you guys. I'll come back towards the end of the segment and uh, tie everything in. So, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. You got Dan Lorenzo. You got Bricks. You got Kate Michella. We'll be right back. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's Andre saying. So what's up? Nothing, man. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. So <laughs> you have uh, some questions about the show, though, right? Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. Um, I mean, I know Kate and I have been talking a lot about this. We've been watching your DVD set. Thank you for sending that out. Okay. I know we both read your reports as well, so I'm sure you're happy uh, to hear the glue, the uh, you know, the gluten and the wheat. And we we really don't do a lot of wheat. I know that was in one of your reports recently, so it's interesting. Um, but I mean, really, I mean, I mean, for me, the question is about the new muscle model category, okay. and and kind of what's going on with that. You know, who is that for, and what do you what are you looking for from that versus the fitness model? Okay, yeah. Um, with the shows um, over the years, some of the categories have changed. So you know, Fitness Atlantic was uh, with different federation. And then last year was independent, and then this year was full out at the WBFF criteria. And being the first show of the year with some new criteria it, it's it's sometimes a little difficult because people have to kind of see what's going on especially sure. this year it was like the full following the whole wbff uh, thing right out of the gate you know and uh, the first show in the states to do that um the difference is mainly your, your bodybuilding is your bodybuilding it's it's your typical um mandatory poses and um size and conditioning um bikini bikini diva has two rounds so you have the one round um, of your swimwear and one round which is um an evening gown which is a little different we've never had right. it in my show before and uh, a lot of the women really liked it that was one of the really the main factors that made women want to do diva bikini is because they now got to do one gown. a gown yeah. which they're never able to do before um a female fitness model WBFF is a little bit different than the fitness model that I've had years ago and it's more of a, a toned body it's more of the the athletic mm -hmm. look for fitness model and then male fitness model is a marketable person who um, has you know a great physique um, not overly muscular not overly um, you can tell there's an obvious difference between a male fitness model and a bodybuilder. Sure. And what was happening is you'd get some of the guys who were the bodybuilders that were jumping into fitness model. Fitness model, and they were kind of, you know, weren't really, they were a little out of place in there, even though they're, they're great physiques. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it kind of didn't fit the criteria. So it's hard really to have somebody who um, wants to be into model and is going into that category and they're very good that makes sense but they're not really placing well so right. it, it's you know for people looking at the, at a stage and seeing these guys with fantastic physiques but not really placing them higher to a guy that's less muscular it, it's it kind of needed its own class i also think that well, some of the models are, are are i mean they're not small guys i mean no. scott like scott dorn is a is a wbff pro he's, he's not a small guy 
No, some of the guys, um, they're, they're lean and, and, and it's trying to find where they're going to fit the best. Right. Um, you know, like in my show, Craig Carpasso was great. Sure. You know, but when you looked at the lineup of the top five, he was the biggest guy there. Right. Very close to a bodybuilder. So he kind of needed a class of his own. Um, he absolutely could have crossed over to bodybuilding and done extremely well in bodybuilding. Right. So, but what I believe is happening over time, and you're going to see the changes, um, I believe, over the years, is a lot more bodybuilders are going to want a category like muscle model. And especially the newer people getting into the sport. You know, it, it's not easy to become a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to put yourself on stage and want to wear posing trunks either. <laughs> yeah, true. And, you know, I, I just see this change of the industry of physiques changing, too. Um, I think the big steroid look of the 280-pound guy, it's definitely even, out. Even the, you know, IFBB, they have the new male physique category. Yeah. Just kind of, kind of demonstrating that, too. It's going towards a more right. um, aesthetic and sustainable look. I think it's going to be very different in the MPC and IFBB than so of the WBFF because, you know, even though the WBFF is owned and operated by Paul Dillette, who was at, you know, throughout the late 80s and early 90s, was one of the best IFBB bodybuilders there mm -hmm. was. I, I just think that he sees the future of that and didn't always put bodybuilding first. And, sure. and even in the name of, of the event, World Bodybuilding Fitness Federation, he's he's slowly changing that, trying to get these guys to understand it's World Body mm -hmm. <laughs> and Fitness Federation, um, making this uh, more of a mainstream change and, and trying to grow the industry and have people accept what it is and not be so hardcore because you know it's when you go through bodybuilding at that extreme it's you know you're basically like put your life on the line and sure you know, it, it's it gets a little ridiculous you know a little, little extreme and crazy you know for sure. some of these guys um i just think that the growth of like muscle model really is going to end up being the bodybuilder but the guy who's you know up to 200 pounds who just looks incredible really is a bodybuilder but could come out and can model in fitness magazines and do very well you know like like a reps magazine cover you know would be more of a muscle model opposed to a guy who's you know like mr olympia style you right know, 280 pound guy sure um i don't think you're gonna you know we're definitely not gonna see that and happen. that's still is that still gonna be broken into a sportswear um what is it swim swimsuit and then uh theme i mean theme wear right no, there's no theme. No wear theme wear. In it. No. Um, so is that is wear, that gone totally? Theme wear is completely gone. So in fitness model too. Yes, and most guys are like, thank God, you know. In, in, so I actually, my, my dream model, of coming out dressed aww. like her, just like Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> yeah. from the '70s is gone. He practices all the time. Watching your show last year, I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there. I'm like, all right. So next year, I'm thinking like headband, short yeah. shorts, the old school Gold's Gym. You know, come out. You know, it'd be it'd be perfect. But all right, that's gone. Sorry. Okay, so yeah. what are we doing instead of that? <laughs> we have a special uh, presentation just for you. Okay, cool. And, and fulfill your dream. <laughs> right, thank you. All right. I appreciate it. I'll just, I'll just keep doing it here on FTNS. Oh, awesome, yes. Every time you come out as a guest, just yeah. wear your costume. It, yeah, okay. <laughs> Get a lot of this mileage. Is, this is the Arnold is the best shirt. You know? <laughs> Arnold is numero uno. That's what it said. Yeah. <laughs> Sell your core. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Um, it, the two differences for for women, well, there's three classes for women. You know, figure is obviously figure. Mm -hmm. um, figure in the WBFF is is pretty extreme of of a Zeke. It's more of that Monica Brandt look. It's definitely not so much of a, a crossover between all three divisions. We go to a lot of shows, and there's people in every division just paying the extra e entry fee, go from one to the next to the next, and they kind of have this physique that's in the middle so they're like well maybe I'll place really well in one and I'll see where I fit you know and a lot of times with shows it all depends on who you're up against mm -hmm. you know you could not be the perfect champion but be the winner because you know you were better than everybody else who was there that day so but it might not mean that if you turn pro in that division that that's where you belong to stay mm -hmm. so when you go to the world championships you're a little bit out of place and you don't do as well so like if a girl the reason i'm saying that if somebody went in to both classes of bikini and fitness model and they ended up winning one 
when they get to the pro level, they may want to switch to the different division mm -hmm. that they're going to fit in better there. Um, somebody who goes in the figure and wins figure is probably a, a good figure competitor, but it all depends on the regional show and the quality of the competitors are against. So if there's five in there and they end up winning, they may be better fit for a pro level fitness model, which will have abs and be just that very, very athletic look yeah, depending on, on who they're going against. But once you are a pro, you can't make that switch from one to the next over and over again in the same show. You can't mm. cross over. Where in your regional event, you have a choice to cross over so you can compete in both. Um, when women always ask, you know, if they can do figure, bikini, and fitness model, I just think it's a lot to yeah. do in one day. Yeah. It, you're jumping back and forth in three classes, and in two of those divisions, there's, you know, outfit changes. So you're on stage five times, and some people like well, get their money's worth. <laughs> they want to be like, <laughs> I want to go into all three, so I'm in and out of the stage the whole time. But, you know, you want to train for the criteria. Sure. And figure out which one's best. You know, um, f between figure or fitness model, or bikini, I think that fitness model and bikini would have more similarities mm -hmm. in, yeah. in between them. That um, figure is a lot more based on overall physique. Mm -hmm. It's overall your body. It's not so much on your presentation of your walk, even though it's looked at, but it's not really part of the criteria. And also like facial beauty really isn't as crucial in figure as it would be. You can have a girl come out with no makeup on, slick her hair back, be in figure and have a fantastic physique and win because of her right. Body. Mm -hmm. Or required poses for that one too, right? Yeah, it's quarter turns. Quarter turns so yeah. yeah, it's it's um front, side, back, side, front. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that's basically yeah. it. You know, um they do get to do a little bit of a T walk, but they're not really the judges aren't looking at it. Right. And they're also judged by a bodybuilding panel. Sure. So that's the main difference is the completely different judging panels and in the show because you'll have figure judged by the bodybuilding panel and bikini and fitness model are judged by people from those type of industries sure from a modeling background people in fitness um some other type of background but you we try not to put bodybuilders on the panel for those rounds right. because we don't want them to pick a muscular person mm -hmm. and even if they're told in criteria and you know no, you're, sure, sure. you're yeah, a huge bodybuilder yeah, you say, like hey you, listen yeah. Yeah. It's what you like, you're going right. to kind of pick. So um, we try to, in, in my show, we absolutely have two judging panels that, you know, one panel comes out and then the next panel comes out so that um, people judging that round, you know, can look and, and be more, um, kind of pick the right person. You're trying to find the right person for those. Sure. Um, so in fitness model, you're going to have a theme wear still in for female the, the women. fitness okay. model. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that style is not so much to be, um, I think originally it was like called like sports, sports wear. wear. Yeah, sports, it was called yeah. sports yeah. wear. So like the idea was come out like a base, you know, pick a sport and come out like that sport. If you want to jazz it up and wear high heels or wear boots and wear all this kind of gear, then that's fine. Um, now it's really theme wear. And the idea is, um, Especially with the WBFF, you really want to think Victoria's Secret show, you know, where they have the wings, the crazy outfits, but it's all like themed. It's like sure. really showmanship. You know, when, when you think WBFF, I try to explain it to people like you have all your other shows or your typical shows and then you have the WBFF. And what I try to compare it to is like the circus. So you have the circus. A circus tent, Bozo the Clown, the Lion Tamer. And you pay five bucks and you go in and you eat pop, popcorn and, and candy and you know you watch and they make money off concessions. I think the WBFF is more Circus Olay. It's mm -hmm. like you're going in, it's a show. You're sitting down, the curtain opens, you're watching the show. People pay seventy dollars for a ticket. It's you're not bringing kids, and you're not really sitting there and, sure. and buying all these concessions. So mm -hmm. I, I try to like explain it in that way, where when you think of what the WBFF fitness model would be, just think show, like you're really putting on a show. Mm -hmm. So you want to try to be something that's very unique. You don't want to come out like a cheerleader. Yeah, we're already sitting at home trying to bounce. Yeah. Try, we're trying to bounce ideas <laughs> off each other for for her yeah. theme wear. So I would definitely. We're not giving anything away on no. the air now. <laughs> Just be ready. But what you want to do is is watch those Victoria's Secret 
model yeah. um, shows and, and see what they do for like those themes that they have mm-hmm. and try to find someone who can make you something like that. I don't know where you can buy sure. something like that. You can't really get it off the shelf. You just really have to be creative and um, and take it to that level. Um, and then Fitness Smile is definitely a, a more toned physique. Um, you can definitely see someone's abs and, and stuff like that, but not overly muscular. Sure. Um, bikini is all about glamour and beauty um a lot of facial beauty Mm -hmm. um uh, just a a really nice physique but Um, you do get a lot of crossovers yeah everything else well from loss from yeah a lot of crossovers from fitness model to bikini it seems they like to do both i think it's it's and you will have girls do you know depending on which regional show you're gonna have people do well and and one to the other like you know you mentioned that Lorianne won. Yeah, Lorianne fitness she, model. She, she won fitness model, but she and so did Alicia. She, what she she had top three in, in bikini, I think. Yes, yeah. yes. But now going into the world, she's gonna go into fitness bikini. Model. Oh, oh, yeah. You, do you have huh. that option? With w, even though she won her pro card as fitness model, you can do that. Yeah, you huh. actually have that option too. And in, in that once you win an MPC, to like say like a girl won um, female bodybuilding, but then eventually wants to tone it down and go into um, figure. I know. Yeah, they can they can cross over from that. Interesting. Yeah, I've seen it happen before. It doesn't happen a lot. Usually right. when they win one, they just stick with just it. Stick with it. Yeah. Um, but what happened was, you know, uh, Allison Dillette looked at her a lot and just said, you know, I, I think really, you know, for a pro level, I think she really should end up training for and being in mm-hmm. bikini is really what, what she fits in a little bit better. And and I thought so, too. Just and the difference there is a muscle stuff. mass and conditioning type of thing, or what is it? Well, I, I just think on her overall physique... Um, she has more of a look uh, of the bikini models. I think, you know, when you're looking at some of the pros now, like uh, Mariah Scott, who's in the pros, um, Much more Julie Bonnet, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, pretty, hard, you know, uh, very athletic builds, you know, and, and bikinis a little bit more toned down, a little bit more based on glamour and presentation, I believe, you know, mm. and, and, and what that is. Um, you know, if Tiffany did really well the year before, and she placed second in the world show, which is mm. really good. You know, but each year there's getting more and more pros, so it's getting a little bit sure. more competitive. That's why the first year that we had it and everybody qualified as pro, I'm like, you, you have to go. Yeah. It's the first year of a pro class. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like you're guaranteed to do well, mm-hmm. you know, almost sure. based on a numbers game. And as the, as the organization grows, it's only going to get tougher. Sure. So I, I definitely think, one, you know, people shouldn't wait. You know, a lot of times they want to wait until they're ready. It's like you know, your opportunity might be now. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so muscle model, I, I think, you know. So there's no theme wear. So, well, so for yep. the female fitness model, right, yep. we still have theme wear over yes. there. And then yes. what else do we have there? We have a uh, bikini component still? Yes. And then the evening gown also for the fitness model? No. Bikini. Bu- oh, yep. just the two? Yep. Bikini has gown and swimsuit. Okay. And, and fitness model has theme, theme wear, wear and, then and swimsuit. And swimsuit. Got That's it. That's it. And what do the guys have for, for, for the, muscle model? The guys in muscle model have one round, which is just swimwear. Interesting. Yep. Okay. And, and they have they have their choice between wearing like a board short or wearing like the tight box shorts. Right. Most of these guys wear the tight box shorts. Oh yeah, leg development makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, and I don't think you see that in like the MPC. I think they have to wear that has board to change. shorts, right? You know, it's funny because you know, yeah. buddy of mine, Craig, mm-hmm. uh, is new IFBB pro. Yeah. Um, congrats to him, but he's yeah. trying to, you know, and you saw his legs at the Fitness Atlantic show, Great. so if yeah. he's trying to lead, lead the movement on shorter shorts for those guys, which makes a lot of sense, you know, show it off, you work on it, so. Right. Um, okay, and then for the fitness model, what are the, are there still two rounds there? Swimsuit for and swimsuit fit- informal? Yes. Formal wear really takes it to another level, and again, adds that the glamour and the fashion yeah. to it. Um, separates the men from the boys. It's really funny. We were again, we were watching our DVDs, and it's funny how some of the guys dress really smart, some yeah. of them not so much. So again, it's it's. It's I can't riot. stand the club wear. When they when they want to consider a club wear, it's like, why would you want to walk on a stage in front of so many people and wear holy jeans yeah. and a t-shirt? For me, for me, I think what did it for the two of us, mm-hmm. and we're not going to mention anyone's names, yeah. but was the uh, was the like the khaki colored shoes with the black suit kind of thing yeah. and the blue uh, and the white socks and the white socks with the black shoes. Come on, and the brother! Black pants. <laughs> white, white socks no. and a black suit. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> did his girlfriend let him go on stage like that? <laughs> <laughs> I think she left him down there. Yeah. 
Make your mama proud, son. Come on. Black sock. <laughs> you know, I, I, the part of it is that in, in my show, we, we had the round come out in prejudging. A lot of times you go to world championships. Or, they don't or, do that, right? They don't do it. They wait until the finals to kind of use that as a tiebreaker. To, right. to look at the guys and say, okay, you know. Um, For an overall kind of thing. Yeah, they try to say, you know, the, the, that the physique is going to be the main thing. And then the evening wear is going to be the one that kind of breaks the tie in that top 15, you know, to really take a look and see where the people belong. You know, I like to give everybody a score. So if you're, you know, 15 people in a group, everybody's placed. Mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely very classy when, when you bring that. Muscle yeah. model doesn't have that. Muscle model is one round, shorts, done. Yeah, interesting. We got to cut to a commercial. So we got to cut to a commercial, and uh, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Messages. More questions, don't worry. <laughs> We're back to the body shop. Yes, so yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I'm almost, Andre. I'm almost. We're taking over for him now. This is my man, Bricks. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about the criteria of the shows and some of the things that are coming up for um, the WBFF. Um, definitely, men's themeware has been axed. Got and it. it was kind of a vote. We put it on Facebook and right. asked people, like, what do you think about theme wear? And people are like, get rid of it. Yeah, get I remember last year we spoke, and you mm -hmm. said you were thinking about it because, you know, the goal there is show off some physique, you know, yeah. creativity, but one too many He-Man costumes, and I understand, you know. Yeah, you know, it's, it, it, there were a few guys I've seen that were very good at it. I've seen one guy, you know, come out on a skateboard one year, and it, it kind of was pretty cool. Um, but for the most part, most of them were pretty corny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or you see a lot, a lot of redundancy. I mean, nothing against the guys, but. Yeah, and then you got people. Yeah, I mean, it's just. Um, well, I'm thinking, how do, the pro, how do the pros feel? Are they, are they pretty happy about it? They were all pretty happy about it, which was surprising. You I mean, know, Phoenix Atlantic, Brock did the Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, yeah. and that looked that was great. You know, he's screaming. That was, I mean, that was great. But yeah. I'm wondering, without that, if they'll be. Uh, I think be this year, happy. yeah, we don't have anybody that really that uh, came into, you know. We, so we were the last show, WBFF, to have it. Because, to have it. Okay. Because it was already kind of part of the website. It was already out there, mm -hmm. and it was just about to get chopped off. So it was like, you know, it was on Facebook at the time. Should we have it? And it was really about the world championships being sure. too long. So the world's you know, gets 300 people in it. And right. The show was too long. So it's like, you know, can we take something out? You know, is this one thing that kind of people don't really like to do? And, yeah, after, you know, the Facebook, you know, um, people go on there and, and asking the different athletes most of them were like you know yeah just get rid of it you know and, and most of the votes were to against it sure some people really liked it because of creativity or more stage time things like that but you know for the most part it's about the physique um what's nice about it is the entertainment level mm -hmm. at, at what some people was was pretty fun to watch for an audience person you know but for the most part it's it's about what the guys want to do and um yeah, so it was taken out, which, which is a good thing. Yeah. You know, focus on the physiques, focus more on uh, the evening wear. Um, and we talked about styles of suits and stuff, and it's definitely to have something that, that looks good, like like a tailored suit. Right. You know, I think you were just saying like a boss suit. Yeah. You know, no, abso just, absolutely. It's more that slender. I mean, as fitness guys, it's tough to find find a good, you know, good fitting suit. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you're getting on stage in front of everyone, you know, let's get it together. Right, right. You know, and, and, and we're Black Sox boys. <laughs> <laughs> St. Clair Collection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we're coming out with uh, Brick's St. Clair Collection. There we go. For next year. Sign me so up. maybe he will be a sponsor <laughs> and make sure that he, uh, all the men are in tailored suits. He can do mine. They might be. Do they only come in 5X, though? No. No, I heard they only uh, come in 5X. That might be an issue. You know what it is? Um, I had a lot of IFBB guys that contacted me. <laughs> you know, they wanted to dress the part, really look the part. So I figured. Do they all have a picture of you on the inside? <laughs> you open it up and it's a picture of Andre uh, Brick St. Clair inside the jacket. See what we're talking about with uh, <laughs> Even when he's not here. Even when he's not here. He's still here. <laughs> all the hate ain't necessary. <laughs> Yeah, so um so how does that so so then you think even your show now is going to run a lot run a lot shorter. Um you know That's muscle cuz now you have I mean you added muscle model, right? Yeah. So I mean that'll kind of balance out though. 
Right. The, the, now, are the muscle models going to be quarter turned or just come on and pose? I, I remember Craig actually said yeah. he competed it in, I think it was Kansas. That was the first one. That the they first had one. It. And they pretty much just had like a massive pose off or something. And he's, <laughs> I, I swear, and look, you know, yeah. he said it was a lot of fun. So, okay. I mean, okay. that's how the feedback was great from him. Right. Um, you know, even though, you know. I've witnessed it the one time in the Boston show. Right. So they bring out the muscle models and they come out, they have their box shorts on, which they probably all have to order like on the internet or something because I think that's probably where, we'll probably have to put up some websites where these guys can find them. They, a lot of guys were asking before my show where they can get those sporty shorts. Right. Because they kind of don't have them in the stores. Just right, it's impossible with their quads, man. Yeah. It's yeah. hard for us. Yeah, they tell you to look a certain way, they don't make clothes for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think some guys come out and they're underwear for that round you yeah know, they have to like you know the, the more athletic underwear or something but you know um we'll put up some links where people can find those and they had the guys come out um lined up they didn't necessarily all t-walk like you would in, in fitness model they came out in a group with more comparisons so they were lined up on stage mm -hmm. and they had them go to the front and they did a double bicep they had them turn around to the back and do a double bicep again and it was quarter turns hmm. all the way around, but um, that was the one pose that, that they all had to do. Double bicep. Yeah, I think they, they did some kind of like most mu their favorite pose of choice, like right. most muscular pose, but, you know, um, trying not to be bodybuilding, but sure. it's very close to bodybuilding. So, and then they did do like, you know, show us what you got type of stuff. And, you know, guys did different things. It was kind of fun to watch. Right, right. It was definitely different. Some of the guys in the regional event did cross over. So they were in bodybuilding and they were in muscle model. Hmm. Um, in that show, actually, there were more muscle models than there were bodybuilders. Interesting. Which, yeah. No, I mean, actually, you know, that makes sense, though. I think, you know, it's funny, even mm -hmm. that whole category, even on the NPC side, is yeah. exploding. I mean, people just are more excited about that aesthetic kind of look, I think, than the, the bodybuilder look. You know, even though WBFF, you know, yeah. being a drug-tested agency, you don't see a lot of the crazy, you know, um, the bodybuilder guys, but mm -hmm. still. Yeah, so, I, I, you know, I wonder if they're going to kind of, you know, I, I think... In the WBFF, and, and I don't know if people be offended by it, but I, I think the bodybuilding kind of does take a back seat to fitness modeling because it's really like the main push uh, of what the the kind of the show is going for sure. mm -hmm. and trying to attract the mainstream audience and get more people involved in, in the sport and kind of grow it. I think bodybuilding is, is you're going to get your bodybuilders that want to do it. Um, you know, and I think as as things grow, I think more people are going to want to be involved in in the the body, you know, the muscle model or modeling right. divisions. I think at first they weren't. I think there was a big hesitation at the beginning for people to say, "Well, I don't know about model. It seems like I'm not a model. I'm a tough guy. I'm sure. a bodybuilder." Yeah, yeah. But yet they put on posing trunks to go out and do a routine of music. To music, so yeah. it's it's definitely something that I saw. I saw. Know. I saw. I saw one guy. Um, do it do a routine to my heart will go on oh my god <laughs> it happened <laughs> it, it happened and IFBB pro no less it happened oh yeah. my god yeah it happened you know I I, I kind of liked it it was kind of it was, it was kind of so it was so comical you know but <laughs> you do see that a lot in the two yeah. 80 pound guys coming out and trying to be like Classic let me let me pick the most epic song that I can. You know, you know, it's like just come out and be hardcore, be what you are. You know, yeah. it's like don't try to. So give me give me some guidance, okay? I'm mm -hmm. I'm six feet. Yep. I'm gonna be on stage probably one. Let's say 195. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that muscle model or is that fitness model? I think you're absolutely fitness model. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any question. Because you know. standing, you know, standing back to back with Cray, although he's yep. in he's in much more conditioned than I am right now, we're almost the same size. Which is interesting because I know on stage he looked a lot bigger. I've never seen Brock in person. Yeah, I mean he's shredded, so I've never yeah. seen if I'm a taller. I have no idea. So that's why I'm I'm trying. Well, I don't, no, I don't you're mind that fine bigger, line. You're definitely bigger than Brock. You know he he's not a huge guy or anything. I don't want him to come after know? me. So let's be careful. <laughs> he looked great. He looked great. Beast. He looked great. You know, he screams. Man. He, <laughs> scared. he does scream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The um. 
I, I think that eventually muscle model, you're going to see, you know, it all depends on who's there. You know, right. It all depends on who shows up. So if you crossed over and you did well in both, you'd be like, well, maybe I'm better as a muscle model. This is what I want to do. Well, then keep packing the muscle on. Sure. Because those guys, I think, are going to end up being pretty big over time. Um, no, they're not going to be the size of... Uh, IFBB pro bodybuilders, right, right. but they're going to be some of the like the best natural bodybuilding physiques. Mm -hmm. Will bench be, be like muscle models? Um, fitness model will always be that shredded, shredded look um, with a marketable, um, you know, very marketable face. Somebody that you can, you know, I, I don't always like to put fitness magazines as like the no, standard sure. to say, well, look like you should belong on this cover, look like you should belong on that cover and give all this credibility to certain magazines to really do this. But the idea is they kind of pick certain people with certain looks. So sometimes it's a good example. You know? Well, is it fair to say that, you know, fitness and is going to follow the pros? I mean, obviously August what, 27th mm -hmm. is the WBFF world. So, yeah. I mean, is that a good barometer to look at what's winning there? And I mean, and both for me and for Kate, as far as on the female fitness model side, to see what's winning at the worlds and use that as a barometer for okay. So you know, the winning physique for male fitness model look like this, mm -hmm. and you know, kind of gauge yourself off that. Is that is that fair or? Well. I would say yes, but this is also the first year right. of you know, a second pro competition the first year for a, a muscle model competition. So, you know, there's probably going to be five to 10 muscle model pros up on that stage and probably close to 30 fitness model pros. Right. Now, if they're not allowed to cross over, you may see, you know, still there needs to be that transition of time before it really evolves to, to really what it is. I think muscle model is going to take some time to grow because what I feel that most of the bodybuilders really are muscle models, but they don't really realize that they are. And they need to see I can that. See that. You know, I mean, once you're a bodybuilder, you just think I'm a bodybuilder. This is what I am. But for the most part, all of the years I've been running shows, there's guys that have been in my show that are great. They're great bodybuilders, but you can't put them on an Olympia stage and and beat Mr. Olympia. So I think that that category, when you change the name of a category, you now take it where you can take it to a whole nother level that you aren't able to take it to before. Sure. I look at a guy and say, you know, I mean, guys have won my show in the past. You take a Jeff Beckham and you put him in, you know, some kind of box shorts and put him out there and they're like, boom, you're a muscle model today. And he's absolutely going to win. That's my feeling. You know, right. I could take a guy like that and now I can create a new title for him that makes him the best champion in the world. You know, so now we a world champion and you know you can have a guy who's mr olympia that can't beat him right because he doesn't fit the criteria that's true so that's what i like about it is you're able to recreate um a new group for guys that are some of the best natural bodybuilders in the world and now make them super marketable mm -hmm. where you you're, they're kind of stuck before they're like yeah you're a great natural bodybuilder it's interesting you know yeah, but no, that's as far approach. as you'll go so good right. luck to you and uh you know until you want to step it up your game and, and get on all kinds of stuff to be 280 and and try to do something with that maybe um with the categories that are coming up especially yeah. with like diva bikini models and, and fitness models for the females uh, is this still going to be the same thing where each class winner turns pro or are we going to have our um are we going to have a, like the overall champion is the only one that turns pro and then advances to WBFF. Bricks is asking me if more division winners are going to turn pro at some of these regional shows. Personally, I'm against it. I think the overall winners should turn pro. And the thing is, you know, as, as somebody who runs a regional event, you don't want to take 20 people out of your show and all of a sudden they're all pros. Because, you know, you're running a show that people, I believe, have to pretty much work up the ladder. And you also want them to come back next year until they turn pro sure because yeah. the more people you go oh okay there's 200 people in the show let's just make a hundred of them pros now where do right. you go next year well there's no, there's, <laughs> no pro, there's no pro league yet either for w right there's only one show a year really for wbff pro which is the world's yeah and the thing is you, you have to take one championship title and make it mean everything oh sure and what happens if you make too many pro shows you de kind of devalue that title 
Right. So it doesn't have as much meaning. Now, the problem is you have a lot of pros that say, well, there's only one show. So when you add more shows, then maybe I'll do it. Well, okay, but if there's only 30 pros that show up and you beat 30 and you're the best in the world, then that's good. No, but sure. If you show up at a show, there's five people and, okay, you won that one. Now you expect prize money and endorsements and all kinds of stuff because you beat four people. I, I don't think it's no. it's that important. No, you're right. So it, it, it's kind of, you know... I think they need to look at it as as a as a pro to really think what's what's the best and and try to be the best. So compete against the best. Don't sure. look for an opportunity yeah. that's the easiest to go in and have an easy win. You know, and I think they need to re, re, kind of look at what they're doing with that. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I mean, the thanks. That's advice you would have for somebody like Kate that's you know coming coming into their first time trying it out and may have a bit you know kind of be like a little bit. I would say that the, the best advice you, you can do is is pick a show that's fantastic, a show that's been around, a show that's going to put you on, on the one of the biggest stages uh, with the best lighting and the biggest crowd, then to spend as much time as this takes to get ready to do a show that may be easy to win mm -hmm. and you may be more comfortable with. Just it's too much effort to put yourself into something that's not worth your time. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, put yourself into the best event and be treated like a star because it's too much work. No, absolutely. Yeah. Not look, we appreciate the uh, appreciate the info, appreciate the answers, and uh, Bricks, let's come on over here. Bricks. April, man. <laughs> Bricks, come over here. Close out the show with me. Come on. Let's go over here. On this side. Can close out the show. Yeah. Well, with you. Close it up. <laughs> All right. This has been the Body I'm Shop. Trying to think of Thank you thing. for listening. <laughs> success breeds envy. God bless. So, God bless, man. So be more successful <laughs> and don't worry about all the envious people. <laughs> Go. Andre Frick St. Clair. Quote of the day. Thank you. <laughs> Dan K. Brian, Andre, FTNS Body Shop. Thanks for listening, guys.